Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Steele. And in this session, I'd like to look at process and what it is and when it's a problem. So let's take a look at this. First of all, let's define process. Think about it for a minute. We've all been in a grocery store. And if you've been in a grocery store lately, you've been involved in a process. Turns out you just can't get food without a process. You gotta go to the store and there are steps to get there. Once you get in the store, you may have to get a basket or not get a basket, a market basket. And then you have to go systematically through the aisles, picking up things that you want and need, putting them in the basket, and then taking them all to a counter where either one process happens, either a human being checks them out, and then you pay for them and take them out, or you check them out yourself electronically, put them in a bag or not, and take them out. Okay. I've forgotten some of the steps as we went through. You probably noticed that you've got to pay for them also. There are a variety of other steps that when you think back on what you do on a daily basis, you sort of do them intuitively. But doing them intuitively really means that you've learned how to act in a process. Now, what are processes then? Well, processes are all the steps between the starting of a social entity and the stopping of it. For example, we could mark the process of that grocery store as not when we left the house, but when we walk through the door to the grocery store. That would be the start. And when we walk out that door, we could earmark that as the stop, as the end. If we look at all the things we do step by step, the decisions that we make, the processes, internal processes and procedures that we go through, we're looking at a process. Now, some of you who have done organizational design and may have even done computer programming understand that this works pretty well in a flowchart. You start, you do some procedure, followed by another, perhaps you make a decision, then you do another, and then ultimately you stop. That process, that process can be seen as an entity unto itself. And very often, when you're working for a client, they're interested in your structuring these or creating these processes. Now, let's stop for just a minute because when you start thinking about it, this is related to yet another sociology concept that you already heard about, structure. Turns out that process and structure are related items. Virtually all processes are structured, but not all structured activity are processes. Processes are a subset of structure. And here's, here's what I mean. Just real briefly, as you remember, structured social activity is this patterned way that we do things, sometimes an organized way that we do things by using norms, rules, to guide our action so that we know what we're getting when we're finished. And these norms are organized and complex systems, they're, they're interdependent on each other, so that something gets done. Well, a process is just really a subset of that. It's, it's really just a piece of that structure that looks step by step on how something happens. Now, there can be problems with this, and this is where the process itself can be problematic. Very often, if you start thinking about a process, there's a flow through it. It may turn out that uh, the way that the grocery store is laid out, or some of the, the material culture things like the grocery carts, may not be in the right place. The steps may be confused in terms of how you have learned to do things. Very often I've talked to people who go from supermarket to supermarket to get various things and are confused at the way the supermarkets are laid out. 
the layout or the structure of the way that, that the supermarket is constructed may influence the process itself and how we go step by step to get groceries. So let's let's just take a look, just you know, as a as an adjunct of that idea. Let's let's think about where process can be problematic. We many of us have had to enroll in an education system at one time in our life. And of course there's there's step by step through that process can be long and arduous. You know, maybe you had to when you started you had to request an application or now you can go online then you had to fill one out provide all the information in it then it had to be submitted whether it was a click or whether it was a stamp on an envelope it had to be submitted then it had to be reviewed etc etc until you finally got an acceptance or a rejection letter well take that process and imagine for a minute where could problems lie well they certainly could lie in flow how fast or how efficiently does a application flow through the system for you the person who submitted it you might be asking yourself how long does it take for that process to work sometimes it seems to take forever now is that because they're bad people doing this yeah probably not from a sociologic point of view, um, that's probably not what we're, who we're going to blame for this. And we might also think, well, you know, maybe they're just lazy. Well, maybe it's lazy, but maybe it's another thing. Maybe the process is organized in such a way that there are backups at various points in the system. When the applications come in, they may come in such large numbers that the organization and the that conducts the procedure of looking at them is simply overloaded. Well, maybe what we might consider is restructuring that process, reorganizing the process so that in fact the flow is a little more rapid or perhaps they don't all come at the same time or perhaps they are a decision may be made in the process to easily remove some of the, the uh, applications that simply don't make sense or are not completely filled out or, or whatever before they actually go to the decision-making step. In other words, we can restructure that process to perhaps make it more efficient. We may not even have to hire any more people if we think about how we're going to organize the steps of doing something. Now, applied sociology, clinical sociology, and public sociology, the, the, the components of sociological practice, all lead us in a direction that gives us tools that would help us think about how to make processes. Challenge yourself. Think about, well, something needs to be done. What are the steps that I need to take to get it done? And that's for me personally, you might say. But then think about a group or think about your work. Think about where you work or where you live. What are the steps that are in place or need to be in place to maybe make something more effective or more efficient? Can you organize that set of steps? Now, what you'll find is, you know, you may start asking yourself, well, you know, that's not a bad idea, but like, where do I start and where do I stop? Starting and stopping at where you're looking are just arbitrary. You have to make a judgment as to where you're going to start thinking about the process. And you draw that line. It's arbitrary. Right, the rest of the social world goes on outside it. You just can't stop that. There's a flow from one process to another. Just for example, using the supermarket example, once you get out of the supermarket, you got to put the stuff in your car, and then there are steps about getting out of the parking lot. Uh, those are process steps as well. Can we more efficiently process the kinds of work that we have to do? That's the question. Now, when we're doing this, we're not just doing this for ourselves, but we're doing this for groups of people. In organizations, this, and this was very popular in the 1990s, but it continues today because it's now integrated in part of what the business culture does. Uh, businesses 
did what was called process re-engineering. They took old sets of steps and they remade them into a more efficient and more effective way for human beings to do work in an organization. Sometimes they were talking about right-sizing and downsizing organizations. They actually took out roles or added roles that were necessary in making that process more effective. They may have redefined certain procedures within the process to make it more effective. So again, as a creative phenomenon, process re-engineering is a great applied sociological problem. Take some process that's in place and then consider what might happen if you restructured it, reworked it. You know, it turns out it could be uh, it could be uh, a, a cost savings or perhaps might even make someone's work life better. And that leads me to my final point. Very often, planning and evaluation cycles are good examples of process. What ends up happening when we plan something is that we set out a set of a mission, of goals and objectives and actions that we might want to address. We might plan a process by trying to determine what is its purpose, what do we want to achieve by doing it, and then, well, what are our goals for that process? What are our objectives for that process? And then finally, what should we be doing at each step in that process? It can be implemented, but then we might want to evaluate it. Let's see an evaluation, and social evaluation is something that many applied in clinical and public sociologists do, let's see whether or not that process that you've put together really works as effectively as it can. And by doing a social evaluation research project, we might try to determine whether or not that process is working as effectively as it can. That's another applied sociological uh, technique, and it's one that can be very, very helpful in the system and social process re-engineering. So let's go back and just review. We've, we've looked at what a process is. We've talked about creating processes. We realize that processes and structure are related, that not all structures are processes, but all processes are structured. We looked at the notion of business process re-engineering and the planning evaluation cycle. Hope that's helpful. Take care.